Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know, uh, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, so you want to... Well, first off, Jared. First oh. off. First try, off. Try it is game that. week. It is, it is game, game week. week, Jared. It is game week. College football is finally here. Let's let's crack one for game week. What do you say? You can crack one. I'll just, I will just already, already came prepared with my bourbon here. Here's to a here's to a season. What you drinking today, Jared? Combustion, a brewery out of uh, Pickerington, Ohio. Awesome. Drink local beer. Drink local beer. And hey, uh, Combustion, <laughs> if anyone you sponsor us. Um, the... <laughs> All right, let's let's go ahead and jump jump right into it here. Um, so we're we're going to talk about the national um do our national prediction episode today here. But before we do that, we're just going to do just a, just a few news related to Ohio state here, some camp news, some news re- related to the, uh, uh, to the university here. So we'll, we'll get jump right into that here. So since last we talked to Jared five, we have five new black stripe removals. All since right. Last all right. We talked here. So we've had, um, Brandon Innes, the uh, stout receiver we've mentioned numerous of times on this episode, as is uh, black strip removed. Joshua Pedelier, also mentioned him numerous of times. Jihad Carter, um, senior uh, safety at Ohio State. Uh, Arvell Reese, as well as Austin uh, Saraville, all with their black stripes removed. Not, not bad. I believe it's I believe it's Padilla. Uh, if if he pronounces it like the Smosh guy pronounces it anyway, uh, and I think they're spelled at least similarly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, outside of that, Kyle, not bad. All right. Um, more more news uh, specifically from the university, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so we all know that um, Gene Smith is uh, stepping down next year as the president at Ohio State. And athletic it take director, athletic director. Thank you. And the the president stepped down last year. And the we president don't, didn't step down. We, last we year. don't. Uh, yeah, Johnson stepped down last year. We don't know who the new athletic director is yet. No, not yet. Uh, but we do know who the the seventeenth president at Ohio State University will be here, and that will be Walter Ted Carter Jr. Uh, he's Walter a, Ted Carter Jr. Yeah, he's Walter Carter. But it's a lot of names. Let me, let, me, let me try that again. It's Walter Carter Jr., but he goes by Ted. Walter Ted Carter Jr. Yeah, that, that's a, a, <laughs> by the way, that is at least three first names. Uh, is his middle name Ted? Kyle, I know you don't know the answer to that. Is his middle name uh, Ted? No, it is not. It is not. Uh, well, how does it Walter is turn it into It is Ted? Edward. It is Edward. So, Walter Tedward... Carter Jr. I <laughs> Gene becoming Big Ten Commish. Uh if he were a few years younger, I, I would have not ruled that out. Yeah. I, I have to be first. I have not <laughs> I have not looked into how he became uh, why his um nickname was Ted. I I'd have to look I have to look into that more, but either way, he will be it's, the. It's because it's Tedward. Yeah, so he will be the president at Ohio State starting January first. You go. Um, also, some also some news here with uh, the the passing of uh, Bob Kennedy earlier this year. Uh, Ohio State has found their new voice at Ohio Stadium, and that would be Tom Snyder. Uh, Tom has done. Uh, some PA and just different parts of the uh, different parts of the country. He also was over at UCLA for for a little bit, but he's at Ohio, at Columbus here and will be will be the new voice here uh, starting this year. New PA in the horseshoe. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Kyle. I think national other, uh, oh, national preview special. Let's 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 get into the let's get into the meats. Let's get into the bones. 
national preview. Uh, we did a Big Ten preview a little bit ago. Um, we're gonna we're gonna zoom out a bit and look at the at the national scope. Uh, Bama might suck, uh, is what Zach says. Uh, Bama might not be up to Bama's standards. Bama might suck by the standard in which Bama is held to. Uh, unless unless they get surprisingly good quarterback play. That would be my prediction for Bama. Decent odds yeah, that... of their collapse continuing. I mean, they made the playoffs last year. Let's not. They did, yeah. Let's guys. Let's let's not bury Saban yet. Let's no, not. They bury didn't make Saban it. They yet. didn't make it last year, Jared. They did not make it last year. Oh, my bad. They all, uh, Georgia. Georgia happened. Yes, Georgia happened. Yeah, uh, I, we'll see. We'll see. I'm just like, listen, I just, I'm not, I'm not one to count. I am not, I am not one to count um, Saban out until Saban counts Saban out. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. So uh, let's look, uh, when we did the Big Ten preview, we went through the pick six preview and sort of, did a bit of a reaction to to their preview. Um, let's start with their first team. Their first team, all Americans. Uh, Caleb Williams is their quarterback. Um, I believe I believe it was Austin last year tried to make the case that Caleb Williams was not good. I believe that was the case he tried to make to me many times last year. He's going to stick to it apparently. Um. All right, you, you you ride that horse. You hey, listen, I I, I appreciate appreciate you uh, staring all of the odds in the face, all of the facts and all of the odds in the face, and saying no, <laughs> Austin. Product of the system. Listen, if, if if you honestly believe that he's a product of the system, then why is anyone worried about the Ohio State quarterback? Because <laughs> exactly, <laughs> because we got a system and we got products. If being a product of the system is so, is that so easy? Not my fault. Everyone is stupid, Jared. Uh, huh. Blake Corum, number one running back. I've said <laughs> I. I don't want to. I don't want to jump into this too hard because we. I know we talked about this during the the Big Ten special. I don't think Blake Corbin's the best running back on his team, and I'll just leave it at that. Um. I agree. I agree. Yeah, but it, but the other the other first team running back half years, Clemson Will Shipley. Now I understand that Shipley is a is a great athlete. But I, I think there's I think there's many more better running backs than Will Shipley though. I like Singleton at Penn State. Um, yep. I forget the guy's name, but the guy at Ole Miss I like. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, just Judkins, like Don Judkins, I think is his last name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Allen at UW, I, I think is also. I was just trying not to. I was just trying not to name another Big Ten guy. If I if I'm being honest, Austin. Is why I didn't say his name next. Um, I mean, yeah, I know it's it's very it's a very Big Ten heavy position. And by the way, Henderson, like I don't know why Henderson do isn't even on the fourth team in this, but whatever. Let's not let's not let's try not to be Buckeyes. Let's try not to be too hard into the Buckeye uh, lean in this episode. We're doing a national preview. Uh, that being said, the mm -hmm. wide receivers are number one, number two, Marvin Harrison and Mecca Abuka. Uh, which is, which is just true. It's, it's, it's just true. Uh, the, the, the top ranked, not Ohio state wide receiver is a guy named Rome out of Washington, who is, uh, uh, in Odunze. I don't know, maybe. Um, <laughs> but he's, I know, I know he's excellent. And Kyle, uh, Ohio state fans will remember Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia, uh, making mm -hmm. first team. Um, Ohio State 
will not place uh, anyone else in the uh, second team offense, uh, which I think is questionable. Um, mm-hmm. And though they, Donovan Jackson does make third team and uh, Cade Stover makes fourth team, uh, fourth team tight end, which if I'm being honest, feels generous. I'm just, I, I'm just going to say, it. I think that, I think that's generous. Um, but yeah, uh, if you look at the offensive line, two Michigan guys, um, one, the huge offensive tackle out of Penn state, who's amazing might be one of the, if not the best tackle in the country. Um, JC Latham, a guy who, if you follow Ohio state recruiting, all know, uh, unfortunately he'll be uh, starting for Bama and not Ohio state this year. Uh, but also makes first team uh, as well as a Georgia offensive lineman. Um, if you just sort of scroll your eyes through the first and second team offense here, uh, what you're going to see, especially if you project forward, the conferences uh, are, are mostly Big Ten and SEC guys. With a, sp- with a splash of a of a ACC and um, Pac-12 in here, here and there. Well, I was, no, I'm, I, I'm future casting. So I'm giving the big 10 USC and Washington. Oh, I, I, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. 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 So future, future Mike. big 10, future big 10 uh, university, Washington with Michael Penix. Uh, a swoop cat favorite here. Second Absolutely. team quarterback, Jared. We are hard supporters of Michael Penix on this podcast. Um, I, I have to say, though, I, I don't think he's making my top two quarterbacks in the country. No. I'm just saying it. No, but anytime, anytime we see him, we see him play, though, that uh, the, the whole sloop cats um, rises up to to watch him. Yes. Yeah, we always, always <laughs> just show up ready, ready for Penix. Um, defense. Let's fast forward to the defense. Um, Jared Verse, uh, an amazing pass rusher out of Florida State, uh, starts off the first team defense. Um, Tyler Davis, big dude from Clemson. Uh, Michael Williams from Georgia and JT does make first team defensive line. Jared is famous. Yeah. You know, that's what they say. That's what they say. Um, (laughs) Then we got uh, at linebacker, Tommy Eichenberg making first team linebacker Um, along with Harold Perkins and Jeremiah Trotter from LSU and Clemson respectively. Austin, are are we going? Are you gonna are you gonna stick with the bit of not liking Tommy Eichenberg this year, or are we gonna let that one go? Are we gonna let that one go? Are you gonna admit that you're wrong on that one? Because I'm gonna need you to just to go ahead and admit that you're wrong on that one, if if you don't mind. <laughs> um, he's a good middle linebacker who has a uh, long. As long as he is never in coverage, I'm happy with. That's not fair. And quite frankly, racist. I'll say it. Uh, <laughs> um, what one of, one of the one of the coolest names though, Jared yeah. here, uh, defensive backs from Alabama, Kool Aid McKinstry. Yes, Kool Aid McKinstry. Um, yeah, I mean, how, how can you go wrong with a name like that? Uh, Kalen King also uh, in the first team defensive backs, um, along with Cooper DeJean from Iowa uh, and Malachi Starks from Georgia. Again, uh, it's very Big Ten and SEC. Um, even Illinois places two guys in the second string um, for in the yeah. in the defensive line. So just keep that in the back of your head that. Uh, at least pick six previews really high on the Illinois defensive line this year. 
All right, but let's let's look at the position groups in general. Um, USC is marked with best quarterback. Um, not a surprise. We're mostly stop. We're mostly talking. Uh, we're mostly mostly talking. I can't talk, Kyle. We're mostly talking about starters when we're talking about uh, quarterbacks. Um, but if we yeah. look at like the running backs, number one in the country, Michigan, which I think is. Especially when you talk about returning talent, I think fair. I think I do think the pick six preview guys are. It's, it's um, fair for a for a uh, preseason preview. Yes, which is what this is. Yeah, I I I I, I do think Blake Corum is is overrated. Um, I and don't get me wrong. I think he's a fine running back. I think he's a good running back. Again, I think Donovan Edwards is a better running back. Um. But I, and I don't think I don't think Blake Corum belongs in the conversation of like best running back in college football. That's all I'm that's all I'm mm-hmm. really saying. Um, Clemson, number two running back category. Then. Ohio State, or excuse me, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Look at that. Very, like very big ten three, heavy. Yeah. Four of the top five in the big ten. We mentioned this a few weeks ago about how how much we're going to see the big 10. I think we're going to see them go back into very run heavy type of offenses this year. So we're going to see a lot of running back plays uh, this year. Georgia should be bumped down because of injuries. Um, Yeah. I mean, but this preview was, was put out before that. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. Wide receivers slash tight ends, no surprise. Ohio State, number one. USC, number two. Georgia, Texas, Washington uh, round out the top five. Offensive line, uh, marking Michigan as the number one offensive line, and I really wish I could disagree with that. I don't. In terms of talent, yeah, Georgia and Alabama, two and three, and then Ohio State and Texas rounding out the top five there. Yeah, I can't, I can't for really... Ohio State? Yeah, I think it's generous. I can't I can't disagree with Georgia being too. Alabama has the talent with the offensive line there, uh, especially with the re- um, recent recruiting that they've had with the offensive line. Can't can't really disagree with them being at third. Yeah, no, no. I'm just I'm saying is Ohio State. I mean, I guess I don't know a ton about the Texas or Ole Miss or Oregon State offensive line situation. I don't know much about Penn state's offensive line situation outside of having one really good tackle. Mm-hmm. I don't know their, like, I, I don't know their top five guys the way I know Ohio state's top five guys, but either everyone is having um, issues fielding an offensive line this year or the pick six preview guys has Ohio state offensive line overrated uh, is, or one of, or one of the two solutions here. Be weird mm-hmm. if you did know about Penn state's offensive line. I don't think that's true. I think I'll know a lot about Penn State's offensive line in a couple of weeks, which I guess <laughs> is probably not what you meant, because obviously, yep. yeah, uh, you know, that's fair. It's fair. Not our no, Jared. Well, of course not. Jared. I have questions. Yeah. I have questions about the defensive side here. And, and were they something something we covered during the Big Ten preview in detail. So I don't want to harp on it too bad this time around. You can go listen to the Big Ten preview. They the pick six preview guys has Ohio State's defensive line way underrated. I monstrously underrated. I was looking at a mock draft just because I was as in in like preparation for this show. I'm like, okay, who does the NFL think the top talents? Uh, coming out of college football this year are. I literally saw multiple mock drafts that had three Ohio State defensive linemen being picked in the first round. So it's like, it's not just me. Jared did homework without Kyle always. Always. Like, it's not just me. Literally see, oh, that's going to be way too small for people to read on the screen, Kyle. Oh, no, that was Austin. Oh, this fantasy. Get your fantasy crap out of here. <laughs> Get your fantasy crap out of here. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, you, you, absolutely yeah, yeah, insane. Uh, I, yeah, you like, think about it. Mike Hall, Mike Hall Jr. 
It's I've seen first go round top, talent. I've seen go top five, top ten mm-hmm. in some mock drafts. Yep. Uh, JT and Jack Sawyer um, projected to be first rounders as well, too. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's that without question that, like, I mean, Ty Leak is a is a second day guy, I would say. A yeah. lot of that depends upon how this year goes for him. If he can, you know, I, I think I think the biggest knock on Ty Leak in the past may have been not taking plays off or staying on the field. So it's like conditioning, in other words. And and I think he's going to I, like he. One of the big storylines in camp this year is like Ty Leak's conditioning and his shape and and everything. So I think he takes a big step this year. Um, yeah, I, I literally said I didn't want to harp on this too much because we did during the Big Ten preview. So and then we ha- just went ahead and did it anyway. But um, so, yeah, let's just move on from that. Um yeah, Ohio State not well represented as far as the uh, position groups on the defensive side, and like good, underrate us. That's that's fine. Yep, that's um, fine. Perfectly but, fine. So, but Georgia, defensive line: Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Florida State, Clemson are your top five. Linebackers are Clemson, Michigan. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Alabama, Georgia, LSU rounding out the top five. Uh, defensive backs. Georgia, Iowa, Michigan, Penn State, Florida State. Listen, every year I have to hear about how good Iowa's defensive backs are. And, like, I don't ever remember. Oh, maybe that one time. (laughs) (laughs) I don't ever remember, like, leaving an Ohio State-Iowa game thinking, oh, man, those defensive backs were good. Like, I feel like, I feel like they're good against Big Ten West wide receivers. So I'm I'm just I'm just saying. All right, Kyle, let's talk about the ACC. All right. Uh where would you like to start? Do you want to just <laughs> you want well, to do pretenders and um do you want to talk about who who do we think is gonna win it? Who's good who's pretenders in here? Because so, I think well, let's let's first say, no divisions in the ACC this year. Mm-hmm. Yep. That that's notable. Uh, no, no more Atlantic, no more Coastal. Uh, thank God I could never remember who was in which. No one could. <laughs> thank God, I knew I knew there was the one that had in Clemson future and years. Florida State, and then I knew there was the other one. And then in future years, it's going to be the Atlantic. And then the Pacific. No, it'll it'll just be death. The ACC won't exist in a few years. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just tossing this out there, ACC dead by twenty thirty. I take the under. It, oh, it's it's definitely under. That's that's not meant to be. It's not meant to be an over under number. That's meant to be like a cap. Like they're not going past 2030. They're in the, we're in the last decade over under 2026 and a half. I think, see, now that's a good over under number. No, I'm saying I don't, they're not going to live past 2030 is my point. I'm, I'm putting an end cap on it. I'm not trying to make a, a medium. Um, anyway, uh, according to pick six previews, Team number one is Florida State. Team number two is Clemson. Team number three, UNC. Team number four, Pittsburgh. Then Miami, then Louisville, then NC State. And I don't feel like going past that. Kyle, you live in ACC country. Um, I feel like Florida State is the uh, Texas of Florida. Mm -hmm. Where every year we're asking, are they back? (laughs) And... I know they. I, I don't know. know. They they're, they're still. Recent... They're still. They're still waiting for basketball season to start. I don't yeah. know. You're talking about the ACC in general or Florida State? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, I mean, like I, I understand, outside, I understand of, outside that... of outside of the like the the two years, and they were they were completely 
held up by their quarterback. Like sometimes you get a quarterback who's just that good and they lift your entire program, right? Um, I want FSU to lose to LSU and LSU to lose. I mean, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get there. Um, so, Kyle, I, I understand. I understand the hype with Florida State with with the talent they have talent. coming back. They they got they have a they have a pretty good um, have a really good uh, receiving core here. They have a pretty good quarterback and and Jordan Travis, one of the best pass elite, rushers, but, but, one yeah, of the best yeah. pass rushers in college football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their linebacking crew is um is uh, spot on too. So I understand I understand the hype for Florida State this year. But they always have it's just good it. It's just going to be, yeah. And it, the question it's, it's always the comes back question. to is it's the coaching and how well do they actually put it together in the season? It's the Texas question. Are they back? Like Texas always has talent and Florida state always has talent, but they never, I like, has outside of the one time that they made the playoffs. Have they sniffed the playoffs since like realistically, like, I don't feel like they have. I want, uh, answer is always no. I mean, we'll see. Like, Florida State and Texas are both getting a lot of hype this year. Um, we'll see. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of uh, so, Texas, Kyle, I, saw overrated, this, I saw this. Overrated Florida State this year or appropriately rated? Uh, Pick 6 Previews does place Florida State in the playoffs in their official prediction this year. I think for that reason, I, I, I'm going to say overrated. I, I don't think they're a playoff team this year. I, I think they'll definitely make a, a good jump from last year, but but to be a playoff, um, to make it to the playoffs this year, I just I just don't I just don't see it this year. They have Clemson at number two. Um. Who do you think's better, Clemson or Florida State? Do you have a hard read on that? Uh, chat, does anyone have a hard read on that? Who do you like? Who do you like most in the ACC, Chat? No idea. FSU is much better. See, and that's that's sort of the thing. Yeah, and I think it sort of plays into the <laughs> Duke. Uh, that's that's the wrong Raleigh Durham team. Uh, here's the thing. I give I give the Tar Heels equal opportunity to win the ACC this year as I do Florida State and Clemson. Well, I'll say it. Thing. I, I, I just don't trust Clemson because they've had back-to-back years where they couldn't throw the ball at all and their offense just looked horrendous. And I understand that they got a, um, they got a new um, coordinator this year to try to fix things, but I just I got I got to see it before I can put Clemson into the talk of winning the ACC this year. So I I, I think to me it's between Florida State and UNC. And then and then and then, there, and then there's a clear line, and then maybe Clemson, yeah. and then another clear no, line, no, no, no. I, and then everybody there's, else. There's a clear line at three, and like I, I, people people in the chat giving me crap for hyping up. North Carolina. And that's fine. You're you're correct. They don't have much of a defense. Acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Um but I but I do think that there's a clear line under the number three. It's not above the the, the line is not above the Tar Heels, it's below the Tar Heels. It's Florida State, Clemson, UNC in that first tier, then Pittsburgh, Miami, Louisville, uh, NC State. I guess in the next group, FSU dot dot Clemson, several dots UNC, even more dots everybody else. Uh, I think you have a, I think you have one or two more dots that are necessary between UNC and Clemson. Uh, yeah, Wake Wake Forest is yeah. Don't yeah. You can yeah, put a exactly. fucking Wake no Forest Hartman. already. Yeah, Notre Dame destroyed any chance Wake Forest had. So, so my my prediction, yeah, I I think I think Florida State will win the conference, the ACC this year, but I th- I think UNC will 
will be there, but their their defense is so. I'll just say it, it's it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just I think you have one of the best quarterbacks in the country on that team, and I think in college football that buys you a lot. Uh, they have a good wide receiving core. They have good running backs. Offensive line is good enough. Um, but yeah, their defense is atrocious. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I, I'm just saying UNC feels, or excuse me, Clemson feels like such a question mark to me. Um, cause like they're in a new era. They got a new quarterback. Um, Clemson was just signing this middling subprime team for such a long time. Then they got a great streak of quarterbacks and became a powerhouse in college football. And then the first time they had someone who was subpar and Uwe Ungalale wasn't bad, but he definitely wasn't good. If that makes sense. Um, and then they just fell off the face of the earth. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with a new quarterback. You know, has, has Clemson completely fallen off? Or do we place all of the blame on Uyang Lule? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see with their new but quarterback. But my, my prediction is Florida State wins the ACC over UNC in the title game. That's my ACC prediction. Yep. That's mine too. The blame is that as, the as, as, as boring as we That made only it accounts for last year, though. They fell off before last year. All right, let's move on to the Big 12. Now, uh, Texas and Oklahoma still playing football in the Big 12 for this season. Um, A fun fact for you, Jared, about yeah. Texas. How many times has the has Texas won the Big 12 conference since joining in what? What was it, 95 or something like that? How many did they win? Um, I will say they they did in. I'm gonna say Mac Brown won two, and that's it. Yeah, just add in one one more to their when they first joined in what was it ninety five or ninety six. Okay. They've only won the Big 12 conference three times. Not great. So they, they won it the first year. They won it the first year at the Big 12, and they're going to try to win it in their last year of the Big 12. Will they do it? Probably. The question is, who, who's who's, who's good enough stop. to who's beat them stop. here? Because in previous years, it's like Oklahoma. Oklahoma, but now, now with... Now, with Oklahoma trying to pick up pieces from last year, like Texas it's... is good enough to beat Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I just I don't like the Big 12 this year. Um, when it comes down to it, TCU lost a ton of talent. They were a very good team last year. What Too about what about the reigning champions? Gone. What about the reigning champions from last year? No, I said TCU. Was it TCU or? Yeah, TCU was in the playoffs, homie. No, it was Kansas State. Oh, well, who cares? Does it? Does it matter? <laughs> TCU went to the playoffs. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't care who won the Big Twelve. One team went to the playoffs. It was. I'm just. I'm just coping. I'm coping. TCU has a better chance of going three and nine than eleven and one. I hate that I thought about that. <laughs> I hate that I even thought about that, to be honest. But I thought about that. Um, yeah, they're just not. They're not good this year. They're not good this year. Um, they they lost too much key talent. Oklahoma, I think, will be fine this year, but I, but I, I'm not willing to go above fine. Kansas State has an opportunity if they 
you know, get an upset over Texas or Oklahoma to be in the Big 12 championship game. It, this is this is kind of like the ACC conversation all over again, where I draw a hard line underneath the third team. I think you have the, yeah, it's actually a lot like the ACC situation. You have a recruiting powerhouse in Florida State slash Texas sitting at the top of the conference you have another team that has had more success recently, but maybe doesn't exactly have all the talent lined up at the moment in Clemson slash Oklahoma sitting right behind them. And then you have the pesky little maybe good, maybe not good, doesn't quite have all the talent, but have all the chutzpah in Kansas State slash UNC. So TCU out of 133 football programs and FBS out of 133 TCU is returning 33% of their production, which puts them at 128th yeah. out of 133. Yeah. Yeah. It's we all, we all loved what TCU was able to accomplish last year that, that this is not yep. that team. No, uh, I like it's, Baylor this year, actually. I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I'm sure they're fine. I don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're fine, but I, I don't see them challenging. I don't see them challenging for the championship game. Again, I draw a pretty hard line underneath the top three teams, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas State. Um, Kyle, what about worth the, noting what about the J- that What about Cincinnati, the Jayhawks? That, what about the Jayhawks with um, Jalen Daniels over there? I think, I think Kansas has a... I like Kansas more than I like TCU. I like Kansas more than I like Baylor. Hell, I, I think I like Kansas as like the fourth team in the Big 12 this year. Which is a wild thing to say. And maybe I'm just eating up that hype way too much. But again, I, they're kind of like they're kind of like UNC. Got an impactful quarterback who has good talent around him, but good Lord, that defense. Yeah. I think the offense, I think the offense, yeah, the offense, you you hit it, Jared. Exactly. Like Kansas is going to be similar to like UNC. They, they're gotta, they gotta put up points because their defense is going to let up points as well too. And for me, from a preseason here, um, look at Kansas they have arguably the best quarterback in the Big 12, the second best running back core, and the third best wide receiver core in the Big 12 here. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see here. And the fourth uh, offensive line, too. So, yeah, they they have potential to to make a splash in the Big 12, but it's it's Texas. It, it's Texas to um uh to run away with uh with this conference this year. Yeah, and it just, you know, can it's it's a giant failure. It's a giant failure by Sark and the entire Texas program if they don't win or at least go to the Big Twelve championship game this year. It's a giant failure. Uh the the the, the road is laid before them. They just gotta not screw it up. They've only ever been to the Big Twelve uh, championship game six times since joining the Big 12. Only six. We know that they won three of those. Three and three. I The the, the loss that comes to mind immediately was in, uh, in Dominican Sue ending Colt McCoy's shoulder. Uh, was Is the primary memory when I when I think of Texas losing a Big 12 championship game. Yeah. Cheering on Sark, screwing it up. Hey, man. Um, All right. He, let's he move can. on. He can. All right. Let, let's move on to the uh, Pac-4. I mean, the uh, the Pac-12 here, yeah. Jared. The Pac-12 for one more year, Kyle. Pac-12 for one more year. Uh, Utah, who's on their way to the Big 12, uh, is ranked number one. Mm-hmm. Washington, who's on their way to the Big 10, is ranked number one. They're tied. And USC on the way to the Big Ten sits at number three, and Oregon on their way to the Big Ten uh, is at four. Uh, UCLA on their way to the Big Ten 
uh, is at number five. Oregon State. Hey, Oregon State at number six. That's a Pac-12 do or die team right there. That's a, that's a Pac-4 team. Oregon State. You're, you're a Pac-4 team and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Number one. Until, until you're a Mountain West <laughs> team, that is. Until you're a Mountain West team. But yeah, you, you look at you look at the Pac-12 here this year. Who? A lot of things you a lot of things you like about Utah, especially on the defensive side here. And they got, I think they got a lot of players returning here. I'm just looking here. Yeah, they have 83 percent of their production returning from last year, which puts them fifth in the country. A lot to like about Utah, and uh, and a lot of high expectations here. Looking at their schedule here. Well, they, they 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 play Florida to start off with here, and yeah, we'll we'll find out right away if if this is the real deal or not for Utah. Yeah, I mean Utah is capable of putting together really good football teams. Like we know that. Um, I have to stop. I keep wanting to talk about conference realignment. I keep having to stop myself because it's just not mm-hmm. what we're doing yep. today. Um, you can go, you can go watch, uh, the big two part three, which we released a few weeks back. If you want to hear us talk about that, Utah and UW beating USC. I mean, that's, that's how I, I don't personally think that I, I, I like USC to win the PAC 12. I like one in I, which, which, uh, gangland, which, which podcast, which sloopcast rule is this? Um, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. I'm pretty sure we have that one on the list. Yes, we do. Caleb Williams is just one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and in a conference that is not super talent deep. You know, give me the guy going, with the quarterback. You know, I'm, I'm going to pick. When yeah, in doubt, pick, pick the, the quarterback is number three on the list. Kyle, that's pretty high up there. It is, it is. But you know, I'm I'm also going to follow by that rule. When in doubt, pick the quarterback, but also a defense that will not let up <laughs> that many points. I I really I really like the Huskies this year. I do too. Real, I really like the Huskies. That uh, we talked about Penix earlier, a a Sloop Cat um, favorite here, but they also got a really good um, wide receiver core. We mentioned a Rome earlier um, in this episode here. Um, McMillan is another is another wide receiver to, um, that you're going to hear a lot about too, and their defense is pretty good too. They got a, they have they're really good on the defensive line, the linebackers. I I think they'll make some plays here in in Washington. I think Washington has a very very good shot here at at winning the Pac-12 this year. Gangland. So I, I think for my prediction, I'm going to pick I'm going to pick the Huskies. England, I approve of your addition of rule 14, um, I, we, but much like with mm-hmm. rule number four, uh, we're going to have to like at, start adding slashes in there. So like, don't employ Alex Grinch. I uh, 100% endorse that as the new rule 14, um, but I'm going to need you to add a slash Tim Beck in there if, you, if you're going to like that. That's the condition. You need to add slash Tim Beck in there and we're going to keep adding to that list. Just just so you know. Um, thank you. We have BIM tech in there, which is also, also acceptable. Also acceptable. Um, yeah, the big 12 or excuse me, the pack 12. Um, I, I'll say this about the pack 12 in the ACC and in the big 12. Um, we drew, we drew the line under the third team. I'm going to give them at least four teams here. I know there's a lot of people hyping up UCLA, I I don't see it. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. I I I don't see them challenging seriously challenging, you know, on a week to week basis with Utah, Washington, USC and Oregon. Um I I do think that there's probably a little bit of extra delineation between the top 3 and Oregon. Um but I do like Oregon fine this year. I, I think we have seen better Oregon teams in the past, but I still think that this is a really good Oregon team um, that has the potential to go to the Pac-12 championship game and win the Pac-12. 
Uh, I, they're probably my fourth choice to win it all, but I think they're a legitimate choice. Like, I don't think UCLA, Oregon State are legitimate choices, legitimate chances to win the to win the Pac-12 this year. I think Oregon is still absolutely a legitimate choice. Um, I still am picking USC, uh, and I know that they have deficiencies on that team, uh, especially on the defensive side. Um, again, we already talked about Alex Grinch and uh, don't bet on Bo Nix. That that could be Rule 15. It's not, but it could be. Um, but but I think Bo Nix has looked fine at Oregon. Um, not great. And again, I'm not putting money on on Oregon, but I like Oregon. Uh. But I am going to go USC and Washington in the Pac-12 championship game with USC winning. Okay, yeah, and I got I got Washington and USC in the Pac-12 championship with the Huskies making uh, defensive plays to win to win the Pac-12. Did we because do you know I because you know I I can't trust Alex Grinch now, and and That's we saw, and we saw that fair. this set and we saw that this Saturday too. I mean they. They let up some big plays against uh, San Diego State uh, last weekend. Oof. It may be a, it may be a long weekend for that defense, or a, or a long season, I should say. Yeah, that 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 all looked all too familiar for Ohio State fans. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, yep. Did we make an official right. prediction for the Big Twelve? Um, I had I said Texas. I didn't, I didn't put. I don't think I said who who was going to the Big Twelve uh, championship game because honestly I don't think it matters. I think it's Texas. Okay, I'll 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 say Texas and Kansas State with Kansas or with uh, Texas winning. All right, all right. Let's go to the uh, SAC, Jared. SEC still holding on to divisions. Um, I don't know if this is. I think they've also announced plans to eliminate divisions. If I am not mistaken. Um, but for now, still divisions in the SEC. You have Alabama projected to win the West with LSU, Texas A&M, Ole Miss trailing behind them. Um, and in the East, you have Georgia, and it, does it matter past that? Nope. Nope. No. I mean, <laughs> Just it is Georgia, and that's it. It is Tennessee, then Kentucky, and then Florida and Missouri tied for fourth. But like. Kyle, who's going to win the East? Georgia? Georgia. Okay, cool. Uh, let's talk about the West. <laughs> like, you want to talk about a hard line? Is Georgia... I'm not... I, I don't give a fuck about Tennessee. I, hey, I here, don't. Here's, yeah, no, I, I, I don't either. I, I really don't. Like, I'm... No, just for shits and giggles. Let me let me look at Tennessee here. Uh yeah, they, they lost a lot of talent here and they've they played let's see, who do they play across here? So they play uh, Texas A and M, they play Alabama. Uh are those the only two that they play? Yeah, I think I think is. so. Yeah. They they they're sticking with their eight conference games. And by the way, it's a terrible it's a, pool. Oh, that is. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Ge- uh, Kyle, no, it's Georgia. no, it's no, Tennessee. No. <laughs> yeah. you, you know that, uh, that trash can that we've seen all too often. Yeah. The yeah, trash can. Yeah, 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 yeah. The trash can makes a comeback here. So let's, let's, let's so, turn so here's our a, focus yeah, yeah, the to west. the West. Let's turn the West the here. West. A lot, lot, a lot of talks still. Similar, not the same, similar to like Ohio State, Alabama doesn't know who the quarterback is, but. No, not similar. I said similar, hold on, hold on, hold on. similar as in they don't know who the quarterback is, but at least with Ohio State, they know that both quarterbacks are good. I yeah. can't say the same for Alabama here. I just. How on earth oof. did Alabama not get a quarterback out of the portal? We saw good several question. good quarterbacks yeah. move through the portal this year. Um, none of them. None of them. They, Bama couldn't get one guy out of the portal. They got Tyler Buckner. You couldn't get anyone out of the portal.
You got nobody out of the portal? I mean, that's, that's good right. God, y'all. They they had they had former Notre Dame starter uh, Tyler Buckner. Yeah, that's the gangland just pointed that out. And oh, <laughs> they listen. Do you think Notre Dame's upset about that trade? They nope. aren't. Nope. <laughs> and like, did you see Hartman? And granted, it was Navy, and they were in Dublin, and maybe the air's thinner there. I don't know anything about Dublin, but. And, like, did Hartman look amazing? No. But were they, but was Notre Dame running their, like, was Notre Dame really running their entire offense? What, did he look fine for it being his first game in that offense with those teammates? Notre Dame looks right. legitimately good. Yeah. Um, and again, there there were good quarterbacks moved through the portal this year. How how does Alabama only get Tyler Buckner? Dare I say, Jared? And it's probably I'm probably going to be wrong because Alabama does Alabama things every year. But I think I think it, I think the competition in the West is going to be between LSU and Texas A and M this no. year. No, I refuse to believe Texas A and M ever puts anything together ever. I. There, there is no bigger is Texas back bait this year than Texas A and M. Not like it's it's the same conversation as Texas and as Florida State and every other. Oh, but they got a lot of talent, you guys. K, I, I they always when, when have I'm, talent. Put when, it together. When I, look at their, when I look at the schedule, though, Jared, I. I really, I really like uh, Texas a and Like their cross, they play South Carolina and Tennessee, which I think they'll both win that one. They, they do have Alabama at home, but they do have LSU on the road. I think, I think it's a favorable schedule for Texas a And M this year. Now, yes, I understand all the points that you were just saying about Texas a And M, and they just always pull a fast one on us, on us, and they just collapse but but yeah i i don't know unless alabama comes up with a whoever's going to be starting quarterback and they just play lights out alabama is going to be just so one-dimensional this year so one-dimensional but their defense will keep them in games though yeah yeah I, i got but i got georgia beating lsu for the championship so do I. Yeah, I have LSU coming out on top in the West, and Georgia's Georgia's the new Bama now. It's the new yeah. top dog, the new top dog in the SEC. And, and that's not me saying that Bama can't be Bama again because they can be, but that's not where we're at currently. Um, and Saban's yeah. getting older, and Saban, um, I've been telling you guys for years, is not going to come to Columbus. <laughs> nope, he's not. Um, also, I mean, with all the conference realignment and the big 10 talking about maybe moving to, you know, big 10 sec is like sticking hard on eight conference games. Everyone else has moved to nine and big 10 is talking about moving to 10 now. So that whole game could get called off for all we know, but I don't know, like. I always, I always said, like, Saban's not coming to Columbus. You know that, that he'll retire before that. When, when is, when is, is that, when is that, 2025 that Bama is scheduled to come up to Columbus? Or is that 2026? Seven. Is it 27? 27. Um, so you still, still get a few years on that. Um, can Saban still? Can Saban at his current age stomach being mediocre? Because with the level of competition in the SEC, which is still top to bottom the best conference in college football, at least for this year, he did for most of his coaching career. That is simply not true. I mean, he had to build 
Michigan State up from nothing. Um, and Michigan State just has a cap on them. Like, Michigan State just has a cap on them. Then he... Well, okay, yeah, he didn't do well in the NFL, but, like, what college coaches do? It's a, it's a different game. It's a different game. And, like, he's a recruiting monster. That's who he is. He... Saban is, when everyone talks about, oh, a CEO coach, a CEO coach. That's who they're talking about. A guy who hires and manages his coaching staff and hires and manages his players. So the question, can Saban's stomach being mediocre for a few years until Bama can sort of get things figured out? Because I still don't think they're going to be great this year. Uh, and when I say I don't... Like, again, when I say I don't think Bama is going to be very good or just not great this year, it's by Bama standards. Like, I still think that they win. All right. Um, did you make your prediction there for the SEC, Kyle? Yeah, it's Georgia, the top dog. Yeah, but who are they going to beat? In the LSU. Shipping? LSU? Okay. LSU as well, yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, Kyle, who do you got for your uh, playoff prediction? I have georgia number one ohio state number two usc number three and michigan number four i have georgia number one i have michigan number two i have ohio state number three and then number four <laughs> yeah I, I knew that was coming <laughs> and then number four I, I I really really want to say Washington, but I I just can't put a Pac-12 teams in Pac-12. Okay, team they're in a Big there. Ten team. They're they're not a Pac-12 <laughs> team. They're Big Ten in waiting. Yeah. So I'm just gonna just based on schedule and in the road that they have ahead of them, I'm going to put Florida State as number four. Okay. Now, do do you really think the playoff committee would put? Ohio State and Michigan in the first round of the playoffs against yeah, each other. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, do you just want to go ahead and flip Ohio State and Florida State? Yeah, but then that's just going to be exactly what pick six has. <laughs> that's fine. Like, it's it's kind of a chalk prediction, and that's not a knock on you or them. My, my prediction's no less. I mean, USC is a little bit more of a flyer, but only by a little. So, I thought a lot... Um, Gangland asked, do we get two Big Ten teams and two SEC teams this year? Possible. I th I totally it, Honestly, it just possible. depends on how well how well LSU does. But I think that I think the I think the West division in the SEC is just gonna be a bloodbath and I think yeah. you're gonna see multiple losses yeah. going into the SEC championship game. Yeah. And maybe maybe if Georgia goes in undefeated, they lose to LSU. LSU goes in and Georgia slips in um, into the uh, into the playoffs because they only have one loss to LSU. Yeah, yeah, I can I can possibly see that, but it's just going to be a round robin bludgeoning in the SEC West though, because none of those teams, all those teams are good, but none of them are great, and they're just going to beat the hell out of each other without any sort of clear, as you said, like they're all going to come out of the SEC West is all going to come out with a couple losses. Well, here, here, here's a question too. Could you say the same thing about the East Division in the Big Ten? You got you got three no. teams who could who can possibly just no. beat up on each other too. I think Michigan and Ohio State are both good enough to be playing against the against each other undefeated, or be playing against each other with one of them having a loss. And if one of them has a loss, then they just need to be the team that wins. Um. Because like I think I think Penn State's a fine team, um, and by the way, you, you'll note that we didn't predict the Big Ten. We did a whole Big Ten prediction. Go, you can go a few weeks ago. You can go just watch our Big Ten preview special. Um, Kyle, before we go, and we're we probably don't have time for this, so but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to. So screw it. So yours, no reason, no explanation, just answer. All right. Georgia, 11 yep. and a half wins over under over. I agree. Michigan, 10 and a half wins over under. 
Hold on, say that again. Michigan, ten and a half wins over under. Over. Ohio State, ten and a half wins over under. Speed round, Kyle. Based on what I had my prediction under. Oh, oh you're you're not you're not earning yourself hands right now, Kyle. I know. I know. Bama, ten and a half. Under. I agree. USC ten and a half. Under. I disagree. Clemson ten and a half. Under. I agree. Penn State nine and a half. Over. Under. Florida State nine and a half. Over. I weirdly agree. Uh LSU nine and a half. Over. Uh I don't know. Uh I'm gonna go under. Texas nine and a half. Over. I agree. Oklahoma nine and a half. Under. I agree. Oregon nine and a half. I'll say under. I agree. Washington nine and a half. Over. Oh, I'm gonna agree. Over. Kyle, Penix. here. Over. Kyle, you want you want some easy money? You want some easy money? Tennessee nine and a half. Under. Oh my God! Hit that under so hard. Notre Dame, eight and a half. Over. I would go over on that as well. All right. Mm-hmm. See, that was worth it. It only took like two minutes. Totally <laughs> worth it. All right, Kyle. Uh, we have in the Sloopcast store right now five new designs. Go to merch.thesloopcast.com. Always be plugging. Uh, the... The Sloopcast Pick'em is live. If you're in the Discord server, uh, just go to the announcements page or ask one of us and we'll get you a fresh link uh, in case you can't find it. Uh, But just uh, go to the announcements page in the Discord server and you will find um, a link and the password to join our uh, Against the Spread Sloop Picks all season. So just Come join the Discord server, and you can you can join us in that. Um, it's totally free. It you can see all that information in the free channel of the Discord server. It's good. It's great. You don't got to worry about it. Um, totally, totally free. Uh, in the Discord server, we now have uh, Sloop coins. What are Sloop coins? Um, it's a totally made up currency. Uh, and like, okay, all currencies are made up. But like it's 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 not worth anything. But you can earn them by talking and chatting and participating in the Discord server. And then uh, we have a wagers channel that we just set up, and you can use your fake coins to fake to place fake bets on a bunch of the stuff we talk about on the show. Um, we'll have over unders in there. We'll have straight up pick games in there. Um, It'll be a lot of fun, uh, and all you have to do to earn those coins is come to the Discord server and talk and chat and participate with people, and you will earn coins. And you can then use those uh, coins to bet in our way. It's, it's, it's free gambling. It's fr- totally free, risk-free gambling, except that you'll make friends in the Discord server, and then you'll want bragging rights against those friends. So that that that's what it's worth. And maybe there'll be a store at some point, but we, we don't know about that yet. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Uh, just real quick here, because I know we're way over in time here. Um, yeah, we're sort of over. It's fine. Yeah, just hope for the speediest of recoveries for uh, Sammy Sasso, the uh, wrestler for Ohio State here, who yeah was in a um, who was shot from a um, um, a car theft uh, situation. Last, was it last weekend? I believe. Um, had some bad news that just came over this weekend here where he has to have some pretty com- comprehensive physical th- therapy just to learn h- how to walk again. So it's devastating news to hear yeah. that. And I hope, hope the, the speediest and, um, hopefully he speed is recovery and hopefully he comes out of it, um, fully recovered in the end. Yeah. I mean, the good news is. 
if we're if we're looking for good news and a terrible situation, which is what I'm attempting to do. The good news is is that you know he is a scholarship athlete at Ohio State, and 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 much like we what we saw, um, uh, you know, with the football program and guys getting sick or guys. Uh, you know, we've had several guys who, you know, would get sick or whatnot. Your medical stuff is covered. Um, which is fantastic, uh, which is great. Um, so that's, you know, the university will take care of his medical expenses, which could have otherwise been financially ruining. Um, even if he had insurance, it could have been financially ruining. So um, he, he does at least not have to worry about that aspect of things. Um, yep. So a, 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 a thing to be grateful for um, in a situation in which we're desperately looking for things to be grateful for. Um, is that it, Kyle? Is that what you got? In, I don't I don't, uh, I, don't I really just didn't like saying, is that it right there? I just want to point that out. That was, I didn't like that. Um, is there anything else in Kyle's corner? No, that's, that's it for this for today. And we are, we're going to get back on schedule here where we're going to, we're going to have two more episodes this week. We're going to yep. post one. We're going to post um, an episode Thursday for our. Hey Kyle, because of how we're having to like switch up the recording schedule. How would you feel about instead of Thursday morning, Friday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday night? I'm fine with that. However you want. Just a thought. We'll see what happens. But yeah, we're, we're going to talk about Ohio State preview and the national preview, which is the return of our sloop picks. So stay yeah. tuned. So normally, uh, maybe I'll switch things up. Maybe I won't. But just normally, um, Mondays will be Ohio State review um, of the game that just happened. Tuesday will be a national review of the past weekend. Thursday uh, is the Know Your Enemy episode where we preview the game. And Friday is the Sloop Picks episode where we pick six games uh, against the spread for that upcoming weekend. So that's the schedule coming up. Uh, now, Kyle, we are way over. So um, with all that, oh, I have to introduce the band. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you um, by... Uh, um, Injecting Strangers. The name of this band is called... They are called Injecting Strangers. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, for sports for local podcasters. Once again, these are the Injecting Strangers. Mm-hmm.